All right. So, just wanted to say, number one, thank you to everybody who is here this evening. You took time out of your busy schedules to visit our brand new Strong Survivors Cancer Rehabilitation Lab. Woo! Yay. Many of you are aware that this program started in September of 2005. We had our first class out at Johnny Logan College. There were seven people in that class, and then we had another couple of classes in the spring of 2006. One of them was 22 people. And at that time, it was me and a graduate student who were trying to manage all 22 of those people, <laughs> writing their exercise prescriptions, supervising their programs, trying to keep them on task as much as is humanly possible in that circumstance. One of those individuals who was in that class is here. His name's Jerry Fopp. He's standing in the door, doorway back there. Jerry, how did we do as two people trying to manage 22, in your, in your humble opinion? Terry, uh, Tracy was fantastic. <laughs> I was scared to death of Jerry at first because when I walked in, he had this kind of arms folded, stern look. And those of you who know Jerry well know that face. Yeah, pretty close to the way, the way he's looking right, right now. But as soon as Tracy walked in the door, all of a sudden he was like, how? Oh, he's right at that dream, dreamy look in his eye, and uh, yeah. Um, but uh, that was a bit of a trial by fire, and one of the things that it taught me was that I needed to get some more students involved, because the way that Tracy and I did it, we did our best, and we managed it the best that we possibly could, but it, it, it was definitely a lot, of, a, a lot of struggle. So over the years, I have had many, many students who have volunteered their time, who have volunteered their talent, their compassion as Strong Survivor staff members. And all of them have gone through staff training at one point or another. And in, I think it was 2013, I started the Strong Survivor staff training class, which is a 400 level class, two credits. Graduate students, undergrads can take it. Okay? And they learn about cancer, cancer treatment, and how to use exercise as a therapeutic tool, which is what Strong Survivors does. And that really helped to kind of streamline the process of getting those students in and getting them, uh, getting them uh, uh, trained to work with the, uh, with, uh, with the staff members, or excuse me, with the participants. And without them, we would not be where we are today because as of this semester, we have worked with over 800 people since September of 2005. And many of those individuals are here today in this room and I want to give them a round of applause. Before I forget, I want to give the staff members that are in the room a round of applause. So we're very proud of that, uh, that number and we want to continue to help as many people as we possibly can. Starting the Cancer Rehab Lab in 2009 in a converted locker room, which is about maybe 50 yards away from this, uh, this room. It was a good space for us for a number of years, but we were sharing it with the biomechanics and motor behavior folks. So it wasn't a truly dedicated space for Strong Survivors. It wasn't the truly private space that we were kind of advertising in our literature. So I began to think, you know, it'd be really nice to be able to, uh, to have our own space. And we had a professor that was using this as his, uh, his uh, 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 laboratory. He moved on to a different department, and thus this room opened up. And luckily, I had been here long enough that I had some seniority. And I was able to say, hey, what about moving the cancer rehab lab in here? So last year on Day of Giving, we raised over $18,000, which was the bulk of the money that we needed to go ahead and refurbish this space. So over the course of the last year, all of that got, uh, um, got done with the help of uh, Plant Services uh, Operations. And I really want to give them a shout out and a round of applause because they did yeoman's work in here. And they were very, very, very good to work with. So this year on Day of Giving, uh, we made it our goal, which was a partial goal last year. We wanted to raise money to be able to refurbish this space, but we also wanted to raise enough money that we could get the naming rights for this space. And many of you know that um, when I was uh, 14 years old, I had a cousin named Julie who was 13. She was my best friend in the whole world, and she was diagnosed with cancer at the tender age of 13. 
She battled it for five years. I helped in, in whatever way I could in that, uh, in that process. But across the course of time, it just became clearer and clearer that that cancer was just gonna keep coming back. She went through nine different lung surgeries. She lost a kidney at one point. She had a couple of brain uh, 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 surgeries and finally got to the point where she was in a hospital in Chicago and she was in a coma and I drove from Michigan all the way down to Chicago and was able to be there to watch her take her last breaths in this world. And there are many of you in this room who have experienced that before. And you know what a monumentally impactful experience that is. And when it's your best friend in the whole world who's dying at the age of 18, it's something that shakes you and shapes you both. And in that moment, I decided I want to do something with my life that will honor her memory and that will honor what she could have brought to the table if she had been allowed to live, if cancer had not come into her life. So I did. I tried to live my best life when, uh, uh, um, whenever I could. You know, I was a human being, so I, I, I made mistakes. I had my foibles uh, here and there, but I tried to be a good uh, person. And I tried to do as much as I could from a cancer-related perspective, like Relay for Life, Race for the Cure. I made little donations uh, 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 wherever I could. But I never really felt like I was doing enough. So when I went to the University of Northern Colorado after I had finished my master's degree, I had no idea what I was going to do for a dissertation research topic. And luckily, I was assigned to work with Carolyn Dennehy. And she and her colleague, Carol Schneider, both of them PhDs at uh, Northern Colorado, had started the Rocky Mountain Cancer Rehab Institute, which is now the Northern Colorado Cancer Rehab Institute. And I went up to meet with her, and she was asking me about, you know, what do I want to do for research? You know, you're going to have to do a dissertation to finish this degree. And I gave her some half-hearted responses that uh, were, were clearly, uh, she was seeing right through that. She said, well, have you ever heard of cancer rehab? And I said, well, I've heard of cardiac rehab, pulmonary rehab, you know, rehab of muscular injuries, but I've never heard of cancer rehab. She said, well, what we do with Rocky Mountain Cancer Rehab is we use exercise as a therapeutic tool to help cancer survivors get through their treatment and recovery period. That's right, I stole that phrase from Dr. Den <laughs> Den 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 Den. She knows. She knows this, so. Um, and in that moment, when she said that, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced anything like this where you have one of those life-affirming moments where all the light bulbs in the world are, going, are, uh, are illuminated, the plant planets are perfectly aligned, you can feel the universe functioning like it's supposed to. And I was having a moment where I was thinking of my cousin, my best friend in the whole world who went through that struggle, and I was thinking, I can use exercise to help people that are going through a lot of the same, pardon my French, crap that she went through during that, that time. And for about 30 or 40 seconds, and Dr. Dennehy teases me about this all the time, for about 30 or 40 seconds, all I did was this. <laughs> just mouth breathing, just staring at her. And she began to wonder if there was something wrong with me, like, you know, if I was maybe having a mini stroke or, or uh, something. And she was just about to say, are you okay? And all she got out was, are you? And I said, that's it! <laughs> that's what I want to do. And... I got uh, a little emotional, as I just did right there, and I told her the whole story about my cousin, this, this and that. Dr. Denny is one of the funniest people that I've ever met in my life. And she's seated across her desk, you know, doing a little professor steepling of her fingers and listening to my story. And I get done, and she hands me uh, some, some, some tissues to uh, dry my eyes, and she goes, I want to tell you something, Phil. I think cancer we <laughs> of course, that kind of broke the tension a little bit. We laughed uh, 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 quite a bit about that. I learned all about the, the science and the art that goes in, into uh, cancer rehab. And then in 2004, when we moved here to Carbondale, I needed to finish my dissertation. I needed to collect data. So one of the ways that we were able to do that was working with SAH, working with Johnny Logan College. We started the Strong Survivors program. So all of that... All that work, everything that we've done from September 2005 up through today, this room is all inspired by my best friend. And she is easily the bravest person that I've ever met in my entire life. We had many conversations that typical you know, 15 through 18 year olds don't usually have. She told me at one point, not long before she passed away that she was ready to die. 
I still think about that. Like, you're 18 years old and you're, you're saying that you're ready to die. I mean, pardon my French, but that is the most badass thing I've ever heard anybody say in my entire life. And one of the things that I wanted for this particular space was to be able to, to be able to name it for her. I wanted to call it the Julie A. Horner Camp Strong Survivors Cancer Rehabilitation Lab. And she would be laughing at me right now. Could she shorten that down just a little bit? <laughs> and, but that's, that's what I wanted. And I, I talked to the SAU Foundation. I found out that uh, in order to get naming rights, we had to raise uh, $25,000. It was kind of the going rate for, uh, for a room space uh, 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 like this. And so we started doing that last year. And then we needed about... Uh, uh, 11,000 today and I'm here to tell you we got it yeah. Woo. In fact, we had it by noon today so I don't wow. even know where we're at right now with how much money we have but we, 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 we had it pretty early in the day so I knew that I was going to be able to make that announcement and now we're starting the process of uh, writing a letter to the naming committee so that they can approve the name and then we're going to have a nice sign out, out front that will say Julie A. Horner Camp Strong Survivors Cancer Rehabilitation Lab. Everybody say that. <laughs> Sounds good. Right? <laughs> Sounds really good. So I want to say a very heartfelt thank you to everyone in the room who donated money, who spread the word online, who spread the word via their, uh, their, their friend networks, face-to-face, etc., who grabbed strangers on the street and said, hey, there's this program called Strong Survivors. How much money you got in your pocket right now? Give it to me. I'm giving it to Dr. Anton and the Strong Survivors. And I want to say a very heartfelt thank you to you because without your efforts, we would not be, number one, standing in this beautiful new space, but we wouldn't be able to name the space for my cousin and realize one of the Biggest dreams that I've ever had in my entire life. And uh, so, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, one, one additional uh, fact about this is that uh, my grandparents have both passed away. They passed away a number of years ago. They both watched their granddaughter go through her cancer struggle. and. They would have wanted, more than anything else in this world, to be able to donate some funds to be able to support what I'm doing, but support something that was going to honor the memory of their fierce, fierce granddaughter. And they made, out of their estate, they made a very substantial contribution today. And that money that they put in put us over the top for what we needed for the naming rights. So that just makes it all the more special. So Grandpa and Grandma Kirsch, thank you very much for your, uh, your uh, contribution. All right, that's, uh, did I miss anything? Do I need to say anything else? I've talked for longer than I intended to, but you guys are used to me uh, <laughs> flapping at the beach, so uh, that's the way that that always